Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen, and welcome to the show. One day in 1989, a friend and I were taking a walk at Basona in Los Gatos. I told her about the restoration of the carousel there, and we stopped in to check it out. I met Charles Dewey, who sent me home with two huge rounding boards to paint for the carousel. This first one here is what I call the peacock wagon, and it's up in the top of the carousel. It's huge. I had to use three different easels to paint it. And the second one is in the center. You actually have to be on the carousel to see it. It's an elephant wagon, and you can't really see the red wagon because it's hidden by the horse. But it's a big red wagon with gold bells. Fast forward to recently, I read about another walker who noticed the horses needed a makeover and suggested an idea to help restore the horses. Francesca Alexander, CEO of the Billy Jones Wildcat Railroad, and two horse restorers, Kathy Murphy and Cheryl Sterner, I'm sorry, Sturmer, will tell us about a community dedicated to preserving a part of the railroad and carousel history. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you very I'll much. I'll get you. your name right sooner or later. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, let's just start out by talking about the significance of the W.E. Bill Mason carousel. carousel. Yes. Why is that so important? Well, the carousel has had a really rich life so far. I mean, it's traveled a bunch. It was uh, originally manufactured for the 1915 uh, Panama Exposition. Mm. And um, after that, it traveled all along the Horn and actually joined a couple of circuses. And then in 1967, it retired from traveling, and it was just kind of abandoned. And Billy Jones Wildcat Railroad, yeah, for a good while, too. Uh, the Billy Jones Wildcat Railroad, Inc. Uh, purchased it and basically restored the whole thing. It took about 10 years, 200 hours per horse. We have 30 horses. Mm. Uh, so it was quite an undertaking. And then it made a debut uh, at Oak Meadow Park in, um, on July 4th, 1991. Well. A little bit of research on mm -hmm. this. Um, I found out that it was an English. Yes. Made by Savage. Mm -hmm. That's, That's correct. pretty unique. Yeah. And the fact that it, I don't know if people noticed in the picture, it, it goes the opposite way. Yes. From a regular carousel. Yes. And to my knowledge, isn't this the only one that we have like that in California? Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure about that. I think there's one more. Ah. But. Um, we're in the Bay Area, so we're the only one in the Bay Area. It was that actually goes made in 1910. Way. Yes, 1910. So it's, it's really quite significant that way, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, none of us were around then. <laughs> <laughs> so how did the uh, Adopt-A-Horse program come about? So the Adopt-A-Horse program, well, Kathy I'll start with that because like when, when I'm working at the carousel, people like to stop by and, and look at what you're doing. And there was a woman that used to walk through the park with her son. And she said to me, um, would I be able to have one of the horses named after my son? His name was Holden. I said, would I be able to name, um, could you name a horse after my son if I made a donation to the carousel? And I said, you know, I don't think we've done that yet, but let me, you know, roll it by Francesca and see what she thinks. And so I talked to Fran. I said, you know, Fran, you know, we should look into this maybe. And we started to research um, other carousels and how they raised funds to restore the carousels. And that's kind of how we got going with the Adopt-A-Horse because, uh, and Fran and Cheryl and I, we formed a committee, mm -hmm. and that was the one that Mike was on. Yeah, Mike Kotelski. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so then we met and got together and figured out the best way to put together the adopt a horse um, you know, program that we, we debuted at what, Memorial Day weekend? Yes. Yeah. And it was very successful, I understand. Yes. All of the horses were adopted, like, as fast as I could read it in the paper. Yeah. I think they were <laughs> yes, all, they are all adopted. <laughs> Within the month, they were all adopted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it had a little bit of a slow start right at that weekend, but once June hit and we were in our summer schedule, all of the horses were adopted within the end of June. Well, it's a great idea. Now, Kathy, I know that you're an artist, 
and also you've been a teacher, art teacher, but um, you really didn't have any experience with, in this line. So how did you learn to develop the skills? Well, so um, my just walking, I used to live in Los Gatos, and so I was used to walk through the area. And there was a, a thing there saying they were looking for volunteers at the railroad. And I filled out the, um, the volunteer application, and they were definitely looking for someone to start working on carousel horses. And I thought that would be great. Mm -hmm. And so um, I researched online, and I did go and talk to Jim, Su is it Sugai? Sugai, yeah. That used to paint there. Um, but I felt that I needed more information, so um, there's mm -hmm. a guy named Denny that uh, takes care of the music at the carousel. And he knew the painter that um, restores everything at the Santa Cruz boardwalk. Oh. And that painter, his name is Jim, Jimmy, I think. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so Denny brought me down to meet with Jimmy. And he let me, I had all these questions. And he let me um, go to his workshop. And he went through the whole thing with the process that he went through to how to restore the horses, the paints that he used, the types of brushes that he used. And that gave me lots of information to work with. And so I came back with that. And that's how it got going. Wow. So, um, the type of paint is it like enamel? Is it oil? Well, is it he suggested yes. It's oil based. It's sign painters. What are they called? One shot sign painters. Enamels. It's a, yeah, it's a sign painter. Because it, it gives a nice finish. And um, before that, they were just using I don't know what types of paint, latex and stuff. But yeah. this this works out really well. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> Well, this is quite an undertaking because you have like 30 horses, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. Um, so how, it, how long does it take to do one horse? Okay, so I'll talk about my, I started with a, a simpler horse. that didn't. It was just a smaller horse, and uh, like Fran said, to use this as your practice horse, just to see how it all goes, <laughs> which is what I did. That was my first horse was Clip Clop. And so, Clip Clop. Uh -huh. well, okay. a, a little boy from a class I was teaching suggested that name. <laughs> but. Um, and when I look back, each horse, I've done four horses so far, and each one of the horses has taken me about a year. Now, the horse that I'm working on right now, I've had since last September, and I'm only just starting to put paint on him because I spent the rest of the time getting him ready for painting, wow. you know, getting it prepped and, and sanded down and all the wood that had to be repaired. So it does take a while, definitely. I mean, it, it's just one day a week that I'm there, so. Oh, okay. It's only one day a week that I'm there, so. Um, you know, maybe it would go faster if I was there more. But. <laughs> well, then people probably, they can watch you, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and so then you're talking. I know I get very distracted. I would have a hard time. <laughs> well, that's why I don't normally like to go on a weekend to paint there because there's so many people in the park, and they do like to ask you how you're doing and what's this. Yes. And, and so sometimes you can spend the whole day just talking and not getting much painting. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Now, Cheryl, you have an art background as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you're kind of new. You just got started uh, with the crew last year, I think yes. it was. Yeah. Uh, what is your specialty? What do you do? Mm -hmm. um, well, my background is in graphic design. Okay. So my specialty, one of the things that I did this year was paint the names on each of the horses. So we decided to use a banner style. So that was something I used my skill with. And then just in the general design of the horse, the graphic arts and, you know, and attention to detail and everything really um, works mm. with painting the horses. So, what is the hardest part of doing, wouldn't you say it would be the sanding, right? No. Well, I think the hardest part is the repairs. The repair of all so, the damage that's uh, the been damage. Like well, the, you had, yeah, that yeah. was really horrible. The first horse I did, Spirit, had a lot of, has a, had a lot of uh, nails yeah. in it and metal in it, which had rotted parts of the wood. Yeah. And, um, you know, let's, so. Let's see some of those pictures. Actually, we've got some horses here to show. I mean, you can talk about the yeah. horses as we show them. Yeah. So. Um, that's one of the horses right it's now on jungle. the carousel. That'll be the next one I'll be yeah, working on. Jungle. And jungle, jungle is named after Jim Sugai. Yeah. 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 Right. Oh, right. That's now the thing. spots were already there, or you added that, or I haven't actually worked on this. I will be after I finish with Finn, which is the horse I'm currently working on. I will be um, restoring Jungo, and one of the challenges in restoring Jungo is going to be preserving how he looks now because he's a favorite mm -hmm. of all the little kids. They ask for really? the polka yeah. dotted yeah. horse. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Some favorite. people have I've, spotty. I've had yeah. so many people say, you're not going to take the spots off Jungo. So <laughs> I, I said, no, we're, we're going to uh, keep the spots on him. Uh, so that'll be a challenge. You know, I'll take pictures uh, yep. of the horse so that I, when I repaint it, I make sure I'm getting everything ah, you know, next? correct. 
That's groovy. So Charles yeah. Dewey, you mentioned, he actually built a mold because we were short a horse when we started restoring. One was just in too bad of a shape to save it. So Charles Dewey made a mold, and we actually made two horses. Oh, and he so, made the mold. Yeah, huh? he did. He constructed yeah. it. And we have two horses currently on the carousel made from that mold. Oh. And, uh, Which are great because yeah. they allow us to take the horses in need of repair off the carousel. We can have two off at a time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those horses are a very valuable part of the carousel. Definitely. Too. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we got another one. Oh, and you can see the name yes. and how he did that on these. Yeah, that's one of the horses that I restored. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the large ones. And Holden, who? <laughs> okay, so this is this was the first horse, uh, Clip Cup, that I got. Oh, so when I first started there, they gave me a simpler horse. There's no no carvings on the side, no wrist saddle or anything like that, and that was also a table that um, Jim used to paint the horses on, and I was having a hard time with doing it on a table. So the men at the railroad built a pole for it. So probably the next picture that you're going to see, uh, I've got Clip Cup on a pole, next. which was easier for me to um, work on the horse. Because this is, as you can see, a little challenging. Uh, next picture. Let's see the next one. Oh, okay, there so this is him after I've sanded him down and put uh, probably two coats of primer on him. Um, and, but he's on a pole now, so it's way easier Much for painting. Much easier. And they've even done something even better. They've got a thing now that uh, on a hydraulic lift that we can get the horse to go up and down. So the, you don't have to get on your belly. It, well, <laughs> right. In order to paint the hooves, you have to <laughs> right. kind of basically lay on your back on the floor. And this is the rocking horse style, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, next. Oh, there's Clip Clop. All finished. Oh, that's Clip Clop yeah. finished, yes. <laughs> finished. He's finished. This is the completed thing. And I think there's a picture of him on the carousel we might yeah. see later mm -hmm. on. But, yeah. Oh, there he is. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's it's back happy. on the carousel now looking happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And the next one? That might be, yeah. oh, okay. So, yeah, this shows some of the shape the horses are in. So on the exterior, we can see a crack. Now, and what are we looking at here? The foot? We're looking at... Or the, uh, part the, of the leg, it looks like. Yeah, it's part of the um, uh, front leg. Or no. the, and. The, the way the horses are constructed, they're all laminated wood pieces together. And so on this one, some of the laminated grooves are coming apart, and there's been rot that's happened in, inside. So we have to take the rot out and then assess, do we take the nails out now? Will it ruin the piece? Will we have to have a new piece of wood? And in some cases, like on this one, we just got rid of the rot, elected to leave the nails in but um, make note in a photo of the nail, and eventually we'll probably have to have a new piece made for so that So you horse. wouldn't like, uh, excuse me for this dumb question, but I mean, you, you wouldn't have to put uh, putty. Well, no, putty, I, but I do use a marble-based material. It's an oh. artist material, okay. and that's what I fill in the grooves with, let it dry, and then I can carve and sand it to the shape that so it's strong. it was. Very strong. For a while. Very, It'll very last strong. for a while. Oh, yeah. Not forever. Right. right. And it bonds well with the wood. So. Okay. And the next one? a few more of the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when we get... That's what a crackle look like. And then we'll need to use our tools to get all that material out to see what kind of shape the wood is in underneath. Because sometimes they're just cosmetic. Mm -hmm. Well, that was like major. That <laughs> was major. That, is, that looks that very was, surgery. Yeah, <laughs> that was a big, big repair uh, on spirit. That was all on your first horse, huh? That was all on the <laughs> and th that's only three spaces. The first horse was, I, I learned a lot about <laughs> restoration, about wood, and the, most of these horses are made of basswood and pine pieces that are glued. Soft. Yeah, a Very softer, soft lighter, lighter wood, and they're um, glued together with a uh, glue made from hooves of animals. And so you have to be careful on what um, uh, chemicals and materials you use. You can't like dip them to get the paint off because that just oh, erodes right. all the glue, and you know it's a you have to take what some a time. What process? With mm -hmm. oh. You know, you sh you guys should make a video of this process. That would be interesting to show to people, and then they would really understand what goes on. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, you Cheryl's done a lot of research on it, and she does very very well with this whole oh, restoration yes, part of it. Oh yes, absolutely. As do you. Is it's that fine. it, or, no. or do we have to do this? This is that horse finished. 
Yeah, oh, that's spirits. So. And she she learned beautiful. how to do stippling and stuff too, which is just beautiful on that and horse. And stippling yeah. is stippling <laughs> is when um, you have a flat brush on an angle and you uh, just kind of go in dots, and that's how you get the shading and the gradations of color. Because this enamel, you can't really do that, so you have to use uh, oil paint, artist oil, over the enamel after the enamel is dry, and um, so that's how he did it to get all the shading. It, it's we don't use airbrushes because the paint is uh, too toxic, really, to use in an airbrush. So for us, we, right, we're we stuck do in not, a contained yeah. space. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Small space. We want to do yeah. That. So we have to. I had to research because I'm a graphic artist, not a fine artist. I had to learn oh, some yeah. new artist techniques, uh, oh. and it was fun. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Well, I think you should stay with it. You're doing a good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So let's sit on the so. pictures, yep. 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 Yes. That's him on the carousel. Spirit on the carousel. Yeah. Uh, He's yeah. in the middle. Wow. So what is the goal now to complete, I think I read from you, two a year? Is that the? Yes, so <laughs> one basically per artist. So Kathy will complete one in a year and Cheryl will complete one in a year. Wow. I Unless, really you know, they go faster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some go faster long, than others. My math is bad. How, how long will it take then to do all 30? Oh, Just, gosh. Oh, probably not in my lifetime. <laughs> Serious? No, yeah. Like, really, a long time. It'll, ta it'll take yeah. a long time. We, you know, we cycle through and mm -hmm. identify which ones have uh, the most need for repair. Mm -hmm. So, you know, certain cracks, we can assess whether it's cosmetic or whether there's really, you know, something integrally wrong with the horse that needs to be fixed sooner. And uh, mm -hmm. that's how we determine it, and that's what determines the length of mm -hmm. how, it, how long it takes to do. So Spirit took me a really long time because all the damage you saw. Mm -hmm. The new horse I'm doing, very little damage except for one ear. So yeah, it, it didn't that take that long. <laughs> yeah, it had one ear that was really in bad shape. Uh, <laughs> So, well, now besides the horse restoration that you're doing, the carousel also had a really major mishap. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened? Uh, so last year during a routine inspection, we found a major malfunction in the shaft of the carousel, which basically holds the top of the carousel. Um, hmm. it, it was one of those things where we kind of knew what would take to fix it, but it was a little bit outside of our. Um, I guess expertise. Mm. So we had to kind of go out and find somebody who really knew what they were doing. I mean, it's a 1910 carousel. Yeah. How many of those are you going to find? Yeah. Uh, we did find a company called Historic Carousel out of Oregon, and they were able to come down to us and fix the carousel. The, the fix took about a week. So they were able to go in. They came um, to you. Yeah, they mm. came to us. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> well, it would have been really hard to yeah, take our carousel yeah. <laughs> So we kind of had to work with them and be like, hey. So it was major. I mean, it wasn't just a part that had to be fixed. I mean, it, it, was, it was major in the fact that it was at the very top of the carousel. It was really hard to get to. It wasn't one of those things where it's like, okay, let's put it out of service for a day and, and take care of it. No, we had to basically just build a, a structure around it so all of the weight that was weighing on that shaft could come off of it so they could work on the shaft. Wow. Now, is this the first time that a really major malfunction happened? Yes. To this degree, That's yes. That's pretty good, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> That's pretty good. But actually, this was uh, another big reason why you needed a fundraiser, not yeah. one that's just going to last for a while, mm -hmm. but something that you can put back in the kitty definitely. to if you have more things happening later. Yes, right? definitely. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, as much as I love the carousel, <laughs> I, I would say the premier attraction at the Billy Jones would be the Wildcat Railroad. Of course. Yes. And um, that's been delighting people since 1970. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it true that the engine number two, which is famous, I understand, mm -hmm. it's a steam engine, and that used to run at Venice yes. Beach, not, not Venice, you know, Venice yeah. Beach Venice in Beach. California. Mm -hmm. They had a, uh, a commuter railroad. Basically, they took people from one side of the beach to the other. Um, <laughs> engine number two was one of three engines. So Aww. they had one, two, and three. Uh, Billy Jones actually found the engine in a scrapyard, because after the uh, railroad went away in 1920, they had no use for them. So oh. number two was about to get chopped up into little pieces and shipped to Japan. Oh. 
and Billy actually purchased the uh, the engine for a hundred dollars, which at the time <laughs> was kind of expensive. Um, but he was able to restore it. it. Took him about four years to restore, and uh, he ran it on his Wildcat Railroad. And he ran the Wildcat Railroad from his orchard for uh, twenty five yeah, years at his home. Yes. Yeah. And I uh, let's see. I think I read where he didn't charge. No. <laughs> Everything was an open donation. Oh, how so, sweet. Mm -hmm. So after he died, then? After he died, a group of basically supporters of his who went to the railroad week after week didn't want to see this railroad go away. So they came up with the Billy Jones Wildcat Railroad, Inc., and they moved all of the railroad to Oak Meadow Park, which is where we are now. And I guess we should mention it's like one-third the size. One-third scale, yes. One-third scale. And this is not the only engine. No. So you have a lot of engines I read about, and so I, I'm a little bit confused about the engines. Do they rotate them, or what's? Um, so we have engine number two is our star, basically. So that one runs during our high season, which is March to about October, and that runs uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Recently, we purchased another steam engine. It was actually custom built for us um, out of uh, Marshall, Wisconsin, and that one runs typically on the weekends, not as often as number two, because number two is the star, yeah. but it takes a little <laughs> bit of the pressure off of number two. So those primarily uh, run on Saturdays and Sundays. Then we have our diesel right. engines that take uh, winter weekends, which is kind of slow, and uh, summer weekdays. So the slow, the slow weekends, they get the diesel. Yeah. Is, is there a reason for that? There's, well, during the winter time, we're only open for four hours, oh. and it takes four hours to fire up the engine. I see. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't so, know. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little bit easier for us to uh, run the diesels because you turn them on like a car and they go. Whereas the steam engines, you really have to more work build up steam and, mm. and get it going. Yeah. And plus, winter time also gives us the opportunity to do maintenance on the steam engines because they, um, they require a lot of maintenance. Mm. So that's a perfect opportunity for us to just kind of take our time, fix things that really need attention, and get it going so when the high season comes back, we can run our steam engines. Yeah. Well, you, you know, the rides from both of them, mm -hmm. the, the train and, and the carousel, all of that goes back into the kitty yes. to help with the maintenance. Um, this is probably another stupid question, but you know, which one gets the most repair? The carousel, would you say, or the train, or both? But equal? I mean, uh, the, train. <laughs> the train. Yeah, the train. The train. Most of the attention. The train. Yeah. And it goes on like a one mile. It's a track. yeah, about a mile loop into Vasona Park, and then comes back into Oak Meadow Park. Uh, now I understand also that y there's room for volunteers. Oh, definitely. Yeah, always. What would they do? Uh, it depends on their expertise, really. Uh, mm -hmm. We're always needing maintenance on trains, uh, maintenance on buildings, track. Carpenter. Um, carpenter, yes. To help with fashioning pieces for the horses Definitely. that we need done. And maintenance on the horses in maintenance between things. On, yes. And so on the carousel. Kind of clean so, them. And, so we'll yeah. find something <laughs> for them to do. Loads yeah. of stuff. So, but you are open not just weekends. You're open right. during the week uh, from like... For summer, so 12, June to about August, we're open hours. every day. Uh, yeah. 10.30 to 4.30. 10.30 to yeah. 4.30 every mm -hmm. day, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, we have some pictures of the train. Yes. Let's see some pictures, and you can tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so these are our two diesel engines. 2502 is the black engine, and 3502 is the yellow and green. Um, 2502 is the older of the two engines. It was built in 1992. It was actually custom built for us as well. And then 3502 was built in 2008. And that was custom built from uh, Marshall, Wisconsin. So that company did 3502 and engine number five for us. Mm. You sound like a train person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. And our next picture? So that's Billy Jones on engine number two on his orchard. Oh, um, we yeah. just celebrated Billy Jones Day at uh, the railroad, basically, where we had an open donation for people to ride. So we take, uh, our anniversary is July 26. Mm. So anytime that that falls on a weekend, we have Billy Jones Day, and we kind of celebrate oh, the man who started it all. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And how long? It was 1970. Mm -hmm. like, this was his original colors for yes. the engine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the next one? Need another. That's oh. engine number two today. <laughs> oh. That was taken a few weeks ago. So this is the star yes. right here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and obviously, number two's gotten a few facelifts over the years. Mm. Uh, we had to rebuild our boiler. We had to replace all of the wheels. Um, there's just always something that we're working on on this engine because, like I said, you know, it was built in 1905. It uh, <laughs> requires, uh, you know, some uh, TLC because we do run it quite often. <laughs> but it is our star, so we want to take care of it. So how many people have you had going through riding the trains? Do you oh, have gosh. any? Uh, I mean, well, for the carousel, track? since it started in 1991, we've served 1.5 million people. Wow. Yeah. So the Very carousel nice. is about a little bit more, about 2 million. So. Hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and see now. Did we see all the, do we have any more? That's it. Oh, well, no, that's engine number five. That's our newest steam engine. That's the newest one. Yeah. That one. They look so large in these pictures. Yeah. They don't look like <laughs> one third scale. That's like, that's pretty neat. You should have some people standing in there so we can yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> For reference. Yeah. Ah. So now, what have you done? Uh, when did you start the organization? And you know, I've been I, with the railroad for 14 years. My <laughs> anniversary is actually coming up. <laughs> oh, congratulations! Yeah, in a couple of I weeks. I hope they throw you a party. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for, maybe at 15 years we'll throw a party. <laughs> um, I basically have worked every job at the railroad, really? uh, with the exception of I'm not a steam engineer. <laughs> I, I tried. I couldn't do it. Uh, but <laughs> I've no, I've been involved for a long time. I really care about this organization want to make sure that it, it stays and it succeeds for, for future generations so they get the chance to ride it. And um, yeah, well, that's why we're here, to all take care of, the, of it. All mm -hmm. of the kids and yes. everybody out there and many, many times and you do it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, right. the organ, the band organ on the carousel, back yes. to the carousel, mm -hmm. that is that anything special about that I should know about? Uh, yes. Sounds great. <laughs> it is great. It, it's, um, uh, I believe it's called Pulitzer. Wool Oregon. Wool Wolitzer. <laughs> Wolitzer. Oh, that was close. <laughs> well, Wolitzer, close. Oregon. Um, it was purchased back when we purchased the uh, carousel. And oh, it actually had to time. go through its own restoration, oh. too. And then about five years ago, it went through another restoration because it just kind of stopped working. And so now um, it's actually digital. So we've kind <laughs> of brought it to, to you know, the, <laughs> the technology. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're changing not? a little bit. But it does require maintenance as well. So everything in that building always needs a little bit of TLC. <laughs> well, I want to thank you all for being here and sharing this delightful story. I just also want to thank you for your dedication, your hard work for keeping the train and the carousel working so everybody can enjoy it, future generations, and it'll just keep going and going. And it's very much in part thanks to you. So thanks for watching the show and watch again.